All right, this first question is from Sweden, from user Grimners, who already, it looks like, unfortunately. No, he's here, good. I thought he had left. He says, I think I've nailed the hiragana and katakana. Next, should I learn more phrases, etc., in Romaji, or jump into learning the basic 2000 kanji? Um, okay, that's sort of a weird thing there. You know hiragana, you know katakana, then stop using Romaji. So don't learn phrases in Romaji, first of all. That would be the, the thing you should do. But I, I think I understand what your question was. It was, should I now focus on phrases or jump right into the 2000 kanji? Um, that's going to be different for everybody. Uh, if you've already learned the hiragana and the katakana and not a ton of words with it, I think you've made a mistake. Because if you don't use those characters, you will lose those characters. You will forget. Let me show you what we do in hiragana from zero. Which, by the way, if you have Japanese from zero, this book's part of it. You don't have to buy both books. Japanese from zero includes hiragana from zero. It's just split up in between each one of the lessons. Like lesson one of hiragana from zero is at the end of the first grammar lesson. So you don't need to know buy this book. But if you already are, like if you're using Genki or some other book and you need to really touch up your hiragana, this would be a good book to get. But here's what we do, right? So we, we go, you know, we teach you the, the five and then you know, the five or ten characters per lesson. You, you know, you practice writing them a little bit. Uh, and then what we do is we have a section called Words You Can Write. Now, hopefully you've already done this. Uh, and these are words that, with the current level of hiragana that you already know, you write them over and over and over again. And you memorize them. And you get good at writing. Okay? Now, back in the day, I used to say you must learn how to write. It's so important. It's, I don't think it's so important anymore. But you do need to learn how to read and recognize the characters. And one great way to do that is to learn how to write the characters. Uh, that's what I do when I'm learning uh, Hangul. I'm learning Hangul, and I write those characters all the time. And I look at them all the time, and I try to keep them in my head. Uh, I have flashcards that I made. Where are they? They're around here somewhere. Um, yeah, don't know where they are. Anyway, I made flashcards, and I look at them all the time, and I practice. And that's what you should do. Um... So uh, I'm a big fan of learning tons of words because the words are what make you comprehend things. Grammar, you're going to get to. But that being said, if you learn kanji, you're going to learn tons of words. For example, in book three, when you go through a kanji lesson, right? Look at all of the words that you learn underneath the kanji in order to help you learn what the kanji means. For example... The kanji, hito for person. You've got ningen, human. Nihonjin, Japanese person. Seijin, an adult. Koibito, lover. Uchujin, space alien. You need all of those words, right? I mean, you learn all of those words just by learning one kanji. And then what happens is you build up this big kanji database in your head, right? You know this one kanji, right? You know this kanji can be read a couple ways. It can be read hito, jin, nin. Those are the three ways. So now let's say you hear a new word, right? Asobinin. Kare wa asobinin desu yo. He's an asobinin. Well, let's see. Asobu is the... Let's just, let's just go through our database, right? Asobu, we know, is the verb to play. And you know that you can pretty much take any verb. A lot of verbs do this where you, you, you take that last hiragana, that u hiragana, and you turn it into an e hiragana, and it becomes a noun, right? Asobu, asobi, play. Asobu to play, asobi is play. Asobi ning, he's a play person. He's a player. He's a player, and that's what that means. He's a guy that's dating a bunch of girls. Now let's say, what else could we learn? Uh, let's say you heard Uchujin. Let's say you heard Uchu, Uchujin out of the blue. Well, you maybe you knew that Uchu meant space. But Jin, huh, Uchujin, space person. Alien. Oh, genius. That's how the kanji dictionary works. In your brain, you build this database. So, learning words is a very, like, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, I can't think of the word for it. Where it's, it, it's the brute force way of learning Japanese is learning words. You learn word after word after word, and you know all the words. But if you know kanji, it's not brute force. It's now you're, it's science. Now you've got Google in your head. Let's just let's just say you heard a word with san in it. Tansang. Tansang. Words you never heard before. 
Hmm, that's a tough one, right? You have to know, well, what is Tan and what is San? And even I don't remember the kanji for Tan. By the way, that means carbonation. That's kind of maybe a bad example, but San. There's a lot of kanjis that can be read San. The number three can be San, right? Okay, so normally, do you have three at the end like that? Probably not. Tan San. Oh, also, by the way, Tan San, that's a type of battery. It's a triple A or a double A. I forget which one. Uh, yeah, it's double A. Double A is Tan San. That's a three on that one. But San is also acid. That's what a carbonation is, tan san. It's something acid, I believe. I'm gonna I'm gonna double check to make sure I'm not giving you bad information. Let's just go to gshow.org. I'm gonna type in tan san, and uh, no, it's bitter, I believe. It is acid, tan san, literally carbonic acid, right? So you see how even I didn't remember that that was the right kanji. I remember that it meant acid, san, right? So you hear this, like let's say you heard now jakusan se. Jakusan say, well, in your mind, you know, san means, can mean acid, can mean three, can mean uh, agricultural related thing. There's so many things san can mean, but you just go through your database. And if you're in, if you're talking about uh, a context of something, within that context, you might be able to figure out the word. One time I was interpreting, by the way, jakusan say means uh, uh, pH balanced, I believe, or weak acid or something like that. It's always talked about in Japanese shampoo commercials. I never really figured out what it means, but apparently there's not a lot of acid in the shampoo, which would be good because you don't want to burn your hair, right? You don't want to burn your head off. Um, I was interpreting for Oriental Land Company, which is the company that owns Tokyo Disneyland, and they used to come to Vegas when they were getting ready to do a Cirque du Soleil show in Japan. They were looking at all the Cirque du Soleil shows here, and we went to Zumanity at the uh, New York, New York Hotel, and we were in the underground of the stage, and there's this part of the stage that goes up and comes down, right? And the guy says, and I'm interpreting and he says a word I've never heard before. He says, これは Q-onzai ですか? Q-onzai. And I'm like, crap. And, and by the way, this takes place in this time amount. This is the amount of time I have to translate. <laughs> Boom. Then I got to say it. That's how much time my brain has to, to go with, into the kanji database. So, Q-onzai. I'm talking about a stage. He's pointing to something. I have a limited amount of time. Q can mean the number nine. Now, that wouldn't make any sense here. Q, to absorb. I know it means absorb. I've heard it before somewhere else. On. On, well, that could be a couple things, but pretty much here I'm thinking sound. Absorb sound. Zai, I knew right away, means material. Is this sound absorbing material? That's immediately what I said. I didn't even have to think about it because I have this amazing kanji database. And by the, I'm not saying I'm amazing. I'm just saying if you know kanji, you have this amazing kanji database in your head. And you might... I was walking with a girl once. She said, Zen Tai. I don't remember even what the conversation was about. And I never heard that word before. But I knew that Zen was the Zen for Subete, which means all. And Tai for body. All body. The entire body or the entire thing. Zen Tai means all of it. And I could figure it out right away. Even though I don't know the exact word in English. That's what the kanji does. And the more you learn, the more your brain figures it out. Trust me, I know that you, I know a lot of times beginners, they, they watch people like me. They compare. I was talking with a girl earlier today, uh, named Kama, who's like a linguistics, and she said something that was really cool. She said, people always end up comparing the top level people to themselves and they feel crappy. And you know what? That's exactly what happens. Don't look at me and think, man, I'll never be like that. Look at me and think, look, that's what happens when you study Japanese. You become that guy. Maybe you don't want to become a guy like me. You know, <laughs> maybe, I mean, I'm not like the greatest guy on earth, but I speak Japanese and that's the goal that you have, right? And I'm going to tell you right now, your next step, learn some kanji. That's exactly what I do because that kid, for, I'm learning Korean. And the one thing I hate more anything about, more than anything about the materials that I found out about Korean is it's all phrases. Uh, I mean, it's, it's all phrases. It doesn't help me. I can't turbo anything with phrases. You know what I need? Kanji. They don't have kanji. They don't really use kanji. But I need words and patterns. And that's what kanji gives you. All right? So I, did, I went really long on your answer. But to sum it up, kanji is extremely important to know because it builds a massive amount of comprehension. You can get really good in Japanese without it, but you'll never get great without it. Never will. You'll be a guy that speaks in Japanese. That's it. You won't be the guy that speaks Japanese. You know what I'm saying? All right. The question you just watched is part of a larger broadcast called YesJapan.com Ask a Teacher Live. 
All you have to do to get your question answered is follow us on Twitter, and when we make the stream, all you have to do is come into the chat room, double-click my name, and submit your question. I hope to see you all in the live stream. Bye.